So here we are in round two, guys. It's 5.07 in the morning West Coast time. It's still Friday, the 21st of June, 2024. The zombie weaver, John C. Roseman, California, is barely alive, barely awake, and trying to figure economics 101 out. So I can so I can barf it on people left and right. Ooh, what a gross ter terminology to use that. I did use the term smooth holly, didn't I? Tariff Act of 1930. Basically the thing that damn near collapsed our government and everybody else. History. Okay, so basically, as I said before in the other one, we wanted to get our economic processes going. But something happened to the stock market, crashed and burned it. So we had uh, a president during that time. Uh, that would have been Herbert Hoover. And he had to struggle with the economic collapse happening globally. Not just the United States, but we actually had a global depression during that time. But in order for us to raise money, we needed to put money on imports, actually on uh, import and exports. We wanted to get goods coming in, especially agricultural stuff, to help support our failing ag, um, our agriculture, because the farmers needed help. So we're going to be uh, getting as much money as we can from foreign to fill the coffers necessary to put a cushion for our guys. But everybody else tried to do the same thing for other things. And in the countries, we're like, wait a second, this is bad news. And so did the economic professionals. When they heard from a guy's name is Smoot and Holly. Who is Smoot and Holly? Try Senator Reed Smoot and Representative Willis Holly. These guys got into Congress and they thought they were going to do business, uh, something to help our country out. Something like good intentions turned out to be the roadway to hell for us and everybody else. Despite the fact that the economics kept thinking, what you're doing, guys, is bad juju. They didn't think of it anyway. The long title, uh, title on the act was an act to provide revenue, to regulate commerce with foreign countries, to encourage the industries of the United States, to protect American labor, and for other purposes, basically trying to save our ass. But it was taking money out of our pocket, left and right, for the middle and lower class in order to pay for things uh, that we needed, but we also did tariffs on other things being exported to other countries. They didn't want to pay it. In my other video, I did say something about the banana, right? In our country, let's say we were the ones exporting the banana. It would cost us pennies on the pound to produce it, right? But in the other countries, try to paying about two or three dollars for the damn banana. Now maybe ten and five or ten cents a piece of fruit. That hurts the other countries' economies and their companies. The businesses that we intend to deal with are saying, No, we'll find others who'll produce the same banana. Cheaper. Therefore our economy goes tanked because we can't keep up with the supply and demand we haven't got the demand demand we had the supply we're overdone or we're overdoing it to ourselves what do we do eat the profits yeah we do but raise up the prices for our own people to pay for the stuff therefore if I you know, five cents turns out to be a dollar for the banana in our own country that we produced I'm saying for an example here but this is what Orange Gas Bag is going to be proposing anyway. He wants tariffs. Eliminate the income tax and put in the tariffs because that will be helping us out. Yeah, by screwing around with our own damn salaries and the, and, and the, and the after effect of everything else. We lose jobs. We become unemployment. We become homeless. There's no balancing act on this one, is there? So this is what I'm trying to keep 
I'm trying to get up to speed on because I've heard it so many times. I'm thinking to myself, he can't be right about this one. So I looked it up this morning. He is right about it. He's trying, or a gas bag is trying to protect our economy by destroying it. He met up with economic leaders who tried to hear a specific plan. You're dealing with big corporations. They don't like round numbers. They want exact figures. They want to see whether or not the profit's going to be passed over to the shareholders, but also if their company is going to be solvent enough to keep working, to keep employees going, but also keep producing their own product that other countries and other and people like you and me will depend upon. You got a product to sell. You need to make sure that you got supply and you got demand going. If you got the demand for it, how about the supply, which which depends upon state, local, federal, but also international. Especially if you're going to go international at this point. I bring you the banana. Internationally, this is exported throughout the countries. This is not a new damn thing. We've been having this damn thing going on for centuries. We've been having imports and exports with each other as humanity was trying to get off its damn feet and wonder what the hell is going on. Oh, look at neighbors. You got something over here. Maybe we got something to trade too. And we start talking, trading, and then, oh, but they get more of the stuff. And then we start turning greedy. So now we got to arm ourselves and go after them. Take away the resources and say, I got more of the stuff than you do. Wait a second, he's retiring again. What's he got? He's got weapons. All we had to do was go over to steal the stuff. Now he's using weapons, and here we go. Trade war, resource wars going on. We'll do the economics, we'll do the we'll do contracts, we'll talk with each other. But then one way or another we start backstabbing each other. Foreign policy at work. By the way, how's your milk? Local stuff, right? Okay. We get local stuff. We get local milk. We don't we don't deal with uh, Wisconsin milk. We don't deal with New, New York milk out here in California. We deal with California cows. We deal with the California dairy industry out here. We produce the product. We process the product. We consume the product. We make cheeses. Other states make cheeses. That we can do. Put them in the refrigerator cars. We got economics. We got commerce going all over here. How about if I want a cheese from Denmark? I understand they have some pretty good uh, cheeses over there. In order to have a good economic processing and good relations with Denmark, we have to have good trade relations. We can say all the things politically to each other. But economics is the thing that keeps driving our countries. Good graces and good pricing. Stabilized enough while we're not trying to kill each other. One way or another. Even in, a, even in the ec, uh, economics and the numbers that we have. Which means bananas would be cheap enough. Theoretically. But because of changes happening in foreign policy, trade and how we're screwing up our environment. We may not have enough of these things to go around. And believe it or not, these things are flavoring for other products, for other foods that we consume, foreign and domestic. We are so interdependent upon each other for our livelihood, for the shirt off the back, for the pair of pants I wear, for the shoes I wear, and the socks that still need to be replaced. What happens when you only have a shower for about a week and a half? No, it's not because of, well, I say it because of laziness sometimes. I get used to it. It also saves on the water and saves on the soap. But I deal with it. I'll have to pay money for deodorant. Deodorant is not an American product, is it? It has to be manufactured off 
the cult, uh, off the continent. I never wondered about Right Guard or about Old Spice. And if they are foreign produced, I have to pay an arm and a leg just to get that stuff. Uh, how about if we have certain itches that I need to get cream for the underpits here? And powder. Are they being manufactured here or is it manufactured across the ways? And if they are across the ways, I'm paying an arm and a leg and then some. Which means I'll tear this thing apart, I'll tear this thing apart, just to get the money necessary to pay for uh, anti-itching material so I can stop scratching like a baboon. How about chemicals for cleaning? Are we also importing or exporting our own cleaning agents such as laundry soap? Dish, uh, not dishes, but uh, just basic clothing laundry soap here. You know. So, if that's coming in from other countries, I have to pay an arm and leg and then some. I got to pay a I got to pay a tariff on that one. I got to pay up more when we have the tariffs kicked in, and we don't have sales tax, but we have sales taxes. Taking away, uh, take away the personal income taxes. But uh, is that money going to be paying for the roads? For the bridges? Is that going to be paying away for paving, repaving outside? For the emergency services? How does that work? How is that going to help me? I'm going to be, I'm going to be shelling out more and more, which means I'm not going to have that much money to spend on anything else. First off. What do you get a limited income coming in? What do you have? You have to balance your budget. You have to see all the damn expenditures that you got here versus the meager income you've got. Now, you got to chunk it up of all these damn things and try to come up with a balance that you actually have something that'll keep you going. Oh, by the way, how's your food supply? That's another thing on the expenditures right there. So, clean clothes, uh, soaps, the body and, and uh, clothing and everything else. Of course, I need to have food in my gut and my stomach doesn't like it, but have to have food coming in, I did say. Did I say anything concerning about a roof over the head? Hey! But that's not paid by tariffs. Well, we do have foreign investors coming in. Partial. But we still have Housing availability it still needs to be addressed. How's the tariffs going to help handle on that one? How's the tariffs going to help build uh, low-income housing? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. See, there's a lot of economic factors involved in this thing. I hadn't taken Accounting 101. I haven't even taken Economics 101. If I had... Numbers usually scare the hell out of me. Because sometimes I can't do the figuring what they're talking about. This and this and this. And a lot of mathematical processes. I don't figure that one out. But you're talking about supply and demand. You're talking about availability. You're talking about what, what affects the other people. I can try understanding on that level. So I can try figuring these things out, right? Okay. So if I've got a country that's going to be doing tariffs on everything and everybody... How's that raise coffers? Unless it's more and more money taken out of my damn pocket to pay politicians or actually pay a government system that's supposed to be helping me get the roads necessary. And we have people still screaming about communism and socialism all the damn time. Everything's so free. No, everything's not free. Everything's paid for by you and me to help the nether schmo help out in trying to make the world a better place, theoretically. You don't get in being a uh, medical school to be rich. You're going to be doing an altruistic way because you know it's going to be expensive as hell and you're going to be paying for the rest of your life on that medical education. You want to be a politician? You need the money in the, in the coffers for it. And you need to convince people left and right that you're the candidate for it. But you need, you need to grease a lot of people on this one for the money.
a schmooze, lie, cheat, steal, whatever it is. But you want to get into politics, you got to do what's ugly and necessary to get in there to be theoretically altruistic and be helpful to everybody. Hardly. You're going to be in debt city on that one. You want the roads? You want the fiscal stuff to be paid for? You want goods and services? You got to shell it out. That's how it is. You work your ass off for a living at a job that doesn't pay very well. You try to do two or three other jobs just for survival. If you actually get a raise, it's a good thing. If the company goes under, you're screwed. You still have expenditures going over your head. So somebody want to tell me how the tariffs work? How does it help in that situation? Where's the emergency relief? Well, I'm sorry, there's no emergency relief because we depended upon the good charity of other people who are also broke and um, broken. Welcome to recession slash depression. <laughs> Try soup lines. Stuff like this happened in our U.S. history, sporadically. The major one we knew about is the 20th century, more prevalent than anything else we've had. But it also not affected our, it also, besides affecting our country, it affected everybody else around the world. Because we all depended upon our own economics and our own trade policies with each other. Not to mention we've had other countries out there that got sick and tired of getting pushed around and being pissy about it. So they had to rebuild their industry. And they had to use their own in, uh, resources. And they got pissed off enough to say, okay, that's it. Now things are being run my way. What happened? World War Two. We got the other people doing the same damn shit. We had uh, the Emperor of Japan. We had Mussolini in Italy. In Italy. Stalin. In uh, Russia until he got wind. Until he got, okay, well fine, we'll just do something that satisfies us. We'll help out the Allies knock out Hitler and Mussolini. But, we're, but we have our own agendas. Okay, fine. We still don't trust your ass, but we'll fine. Just because you're allies doesn't mean you're actually real friends unless you are real friends. So how about a nice big fat tariff on your ass? Of course, if you got stuff coming into our country, we got to pay for it out of pocket. But that's supposed to raise up our country's coffers here. We think the other guy's going to be paying the money to us. No, we get to pay for it. So, you start hearing tariffs, freak. Just became $5 banana. Just became a $20 cup of coffee. Get the point? I thought you might. Now, somebody want to explain that back to me again?